Hi, welcome to part two on the video on TOF like physiology. So, after having understood the basics of TOF like physiology and the prerequisites which are required for it, we'll go a little bit into details of the various anomalies that are responsible for causing TOF like physiology. Now, we'll be dealing with the next remaining questions, and that is what are the examples of TOF like physiology with a little bit of detail? and what lesions exhibit L malposition of aorta. So let's start with the prototype of TOF-like physiology, which is tetralogy of fallow and its variants. So we've already visited this diagram before in the first video, LV and RV, the aorta coming from the LV, the pulmonary artery arising from the RV. There is a significant right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. And here you can see the deoxygenated blood, which comes from the RA into the RV goes across, tries to grow across the obstruction of the RVOTO and some of it enters the aorta through the VSD as a right to left shunt. Sim similarly, a uh, oxygenated bloodstream comes from LA into the LV and that goes into the aorta. So the aorta has both deoxygenated as well as oxygenated blood and it leads to cyanosis if the amount of deoxygenated blood is significant. Now, here you can see that the arrows are quite thick. That means there is a phenomenon in the typical TOF called favorable streaming, which means that the pulmonary venous return, which comes into the left atrium, which contains the oxygenated blood, goes into the aorta. So oxygenated blood goes into the aorta to deliver oxygen to the rest of the body. This is known as favorable streaming. As a result, of the seven causes of TOF like physiology, the typical TOF has the highest saturation, which is good. As a result, we denote this typical TOF with this symbol, which means it, 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 it indicates favorable streaming and it's a good thing. What are the other things that are associated with typical TOF? There is no cardiomegaly. So the heart size is normal. The apex is all RV. As we know, because of this pulmonary stenosis, the RV hypertrophies, and that is one of the aspects of calling it a tetralogy of fallow. There is RVOTO, there is RVH, VSD, and overriding of the aorta. These are the four components. So the R apex is RV type. As a result, there is right ventricular hypertrophy on the ECG and there is right axis deviation up to 120 to 150 degrees. Also on the precordial leads, there is a sudden transition in V1 and V2. In 25% of cases, the aortic arch is right sided. The next example of TOF like physiology is corrected transposition of great arteries with VSD and PS. Now, what is corrected transposition of great arteries? There is basically something known as AV VA concord uh, discordance. So, what does it mean? There is a discordance between the atria and the ventricle. The LA is giving blood to RV, not to the LV. And there is VA, that is ventricle to arterial discordance as well. That is the RV is now giving rise to aorta. But by a double discordance, what happens is the oxygenated blood, which is denoted by red, finally does end up going into the aorta and uh, supplies to the rest of the body. So this double discordance basically corrects it. And hence it is known as corrected TGA. Even if there is discordance, it self-corrects and leads to overall better, better saturations. It's the same thing on the right side. RA gives rise to blood which goes into the LV. So there's a AV discordance. And LV sends its blood across to the pulmonary artery. So there is VA, that is ventricular arterial discordance. Again, a double discordance, but... The deoxygenated blood denoted by blue ultimately does end up going into the pulmonary artery. So essentially there is ventricular inversion which is giving rise to all these problems. Had LV been here, things would have been quite okay. 
Now, why is this a top flight physiology? Because in addition to this corrected TGA-like picture, there is a large VSD, as you can see, and there is pulmonary stenosis leading to a narrow pulmonary artery. So, this is again denoted by a green colored face, which means there is again favorable streaming, which is again good news comparatively uh, with respect to the rest of the examples that we'll see. So, oxygenated blood coming from the LA goes into the RV and it preferentially prefers going into the aorta. Some of it does go from left to right into the LV and it does enter the pulmonary artery also. But preferentially, most of the oxygenated blood goes into the aorta. And most of the right-sided blood preferentially goes into the pulmonary artery. So there is favorable streaming. Again, just like typical TOF, this particular TOF-like physiology also has the highest saturation. One of the key points to detect corrected TGA with VSDPS is something known as palpable aortic pulsations and a palpable second heart sound in the third left intercostal space. And this is known as L mal position of aorta. Now, normally the aorta and the pulmonary artery cross each other. So the aorta goes like this and the pulmonary artery crosses it across like this. But here you can see that the aorta is to the left of the pulmonary artery. So this is known as L mal position of aorta. We're talking about the relationship of these two great arteries in space. So normal aorta is right sided. It is known as right posed or R aorta. Here in this corrected TGA VSDPS or any case of corrected TGA essentially, the aorta is L posed. And this is a good clinical sign to look for when you feel pulsations in the third left intercostal space you can detect the possibility of a corrected TGA. Again, just like typical TOF, there is no cardiomegaly. The apex, which is supposed to be LV, is actually medially placed. So because of this ventricular inversion, it is not a typical apex. Now on ECG, you will get a Q wave in V1 and V2. Now remember, septal depolarization, whatever little septum is remaining, usually occurs from LV to RV. In a normally placed ventricle where the LV is on the left side and RV is on the right side, the septum depolarizes from left to right. As a result, there are Q waves in the lateral leads, lateral precordial leads in V5 and V6. And there are no Q waves in V1 and V2. But here you have ventricular inversion. So now septal depolariz depolarization still occurs from LV to RV. But as the septal, septum depolarizes, Q waves occur now in V1, V2, and there are no Q waves in V5, V6. So this is another great clue towards ventricular inversion. And also the incidence of AV blocks on ECG are high in corrected TGA. And the next great clue which can be seen on the chest X-ray is the presence of an L-posed aorta. The next TOF-like physiology that we'll be dealing with is double outlet right ventricle with subaortic VSD with PS. You can immediately make out that there is a green symbol here again, which means we are again dealing with favorable streaming leading to higher saturation. So how is that? What is DORV? That is double outlet. That means both the aorta and pulmonary artery arise from the RV. So the deoxygenated blood of the RV tries to go into the aorta as well as the pulmonary artery. Since this is a TOF-like physiology, there's going to be PS as well as a large VSD. But the good part about this sub-aortic VSD, which is seen with DORV in this example, is that because of the presence of sub-aortic VSD, blood on the left side preferentially goes into the aorta. Of course, some blood which is deoxygenated also enters the aorta, but there's more preferential streaming, a favorable streaming from the LV into the aorta. So amongst all the TOF-like physiologies, it still has a higher saturation like the first two examples. So again, like the first two examples, there is no or minimal cardiomegaly. Because it is DORV, the apex will obviously be right ventricular apex. And as a result on ECG, there'll be right ventricular hypertrophy. And also the right axis deviation 
will be present and it will in fact be more than what is seen with typical TOF. It will be more than 120 degrees or even more than 150 degrees. There is a high incidence of PR prolongation with DORV subaortic VSD. There is also something known as counterclockwise loop. Now this is a topic in itself but what it essentially means is that whatever may be the axis like in this case it is right axis deviation but the overall direction of depolarization is suggested by looping and it is either clockwise or it is counterclockwise in a planar axis that is the axis which is represented by the limb leads on ECG. So essentially all you have to remember is that DORV is associated with counterclockwise loop and you can detect that on a basic 12 lead ECG by Q waves in 1 and AVN. Other examples of a counterclockwise loop are tricuspid atresia and endocardial cushion defects. These, this is a high yield information. I'll talk about that when the time arises. And also, just like typical TOF, right aortic arch is present in 25% of the patients. After the first three types of TOF-like physiology, which had favorable streaming and pretty good saturation, we now come to the worst varieties. So the first one is DTGA VSDPS. We've already talked about corrected TGA VSDPS or LTGA VSDPS. What is DTGA? As I've mentioned, D means that in space, the aorta is on the right side. And that is how the aorta is normally in normal people as well. But even if the aorta in space is on the right side of the pulmonary artery, it does not arise from the LV, it arises from the RV and the pulmonary artery fully arises from the LV. That's why it is known as transposition of great arteries. So there's transposition with aorta being on the right side. This is not corrected TGA because LA is streaming blood into the LV only. It's not streaming into the RV. So there is no evidence of ventricular inversion as we saw previously with corrected TGA. So because this is a TOF-like physiology, there is associated pulmonary stenosis with small pulmonary arteries and a large VSD. But even if this VSD is there, the pulmonary artery is fully arising from the LV. This is important because we are going to be talking about a similar transposition-like physiology in the next one. So that is why it is important to differentiate these two. So in DTGA with VSDPS, pulmonary artery arises fully from the LV and aorta arises fully from the RV. Having this lesion is bad news. That's why it is colored red because there is unfavorable streaming. And what does that mean? There is wastage of oxygenated blood in the pulmonary artery, which means that the oxygenated blood which comes in the LA from the pulmonary veins enters the LV, but it does not go to the aorta. Even if there's a VSD, it prefers going into the pulmonary artery. So the oxygenated blood is again going to the pulmonary artery for more oxygenation, which is not required. So there is basically wastage of this good blood. Similarly, on the right side, the deoxygenated blood, which comes into the RV, doesn't enter the pulmonary artery, even if there is a VSD here, plus there is an obstruction. So it prefers going into the aorta. So bad blood, deoxygenated blood is entering the systemic arteries. So that leads to low saturation, unfavorable streaming, and overall bad news. As a result, the cardiomegaly in DTGA VSDPS is moderate. So the heart size is increased, whereas the heart size was normal in the first three examples. Why is the heart size increased? In order to maintain a saturation, which would be equal to that achieved by the first three varieties, the heart would have to pump a lot more and it would have to increase its cardiac output a lot more. By doing so, the size of the heart would increase and hence there is cardiomegaly in this variety. The apex is right ventricular and there is RVH along with extreme right axis deviation. On the chest x-ray, you will see that the pedicle that is the part of the x-ray where the great arteries are present is very narrow and the arch is right sided in 10%. So these are a few clues on x-ray to point towards the presence of a transposition 
of great arteries D type. Coming to the fifth example of TOF like physiology, we've already dealt with bad news with TGA VSDPS. And now we have another example of TOF like physiology, which leads to bad news. That is BORV, but this time it is subpulmonic VSD. Subaortic VSD did pretty well. It had favorable streaming, but subpulmonic VSD does not have favorable streaming. And this particular combination of DORV, subpulmonic VSD, and PS is known as toxic Bing. Essentially, this demonstrates, in addition to TOF like physiology, but this particular anatomy demonstrates a TGA like physiology. What does that mean? So, here you can see that good oxygenated blood is coming from LA to LV, and it is giving rise to blood which streams into either the pulmonary artery or into the aorta. Now, as opposed to TGA VSDPS, both the aorta and the pulmonary artery are arising from the RV. In TGA, pulmonary artery was fully coming out from the LV. So here, oxygenated blood is preferentially going again into the pulmonary artery, which was the same that was happening with TGA. So there was wastage of this oxygenated blood. And in the same way, on the right side, deoxygenated blood is preferentially going into the aorta, although some attempts to go into the pulmonary artery, but again, there's an obstruction. So essentially, there is deoxygenated blood going into the systemic arteries. So this is known as DORV, that is both the arteries coming from the right ventricle, having a, a VSD and a pulmonic stenosis known as toxic Bing anomaly. Just like TGA VSDPS, it demonstrates moderate cardiomegaly. The apex, because it is a DORV, is going to be right-sided. There will be RVH and there will be extreme right axis deviation. And on the X-ray, 10% will demonstrate right-sided aortic arch. Now we come to the last two lesions, and they belong to the intermediate variety. What does that mean? This lesion is called single ventricle VSDPS. So essentially, what it means is that there is no interventricular septum. So you just have one single ventricle. Usually, it is of LV type. Hence, the apex will also be LV apex. In some cases, this single ventricle demonstrates a morphology, which is of RV morphology, but that is quite rare. Now, this single ventricle, I've not shown the input of the RA and the LA into the single ventricle. That is assumed. But essentially, what happens is this is like a bag in which there is mixing of both the deoxygenated as well as oxygenated blood, which is coming from RA and LA, respectively. So there is mixing. Hence, this belongs to a kind of physiology known as admixture physiology. So there is admixture of pulmonary that is coming from the LA and systemic venous return, which is coming from the RA. So admixture physiology is denoted by the color orange. That means it is neither too good nor is it too bad. It's not as good as TOF and these first three types, nor is it as bad as the TGA variety of TOF-like tough like physiology so because of this mixing what happens next is there is something known as the outlet chamber which arises from the single ventricle and this outlet chamber gives rise to the aorta now since this is a tough like physiology there will be a pulmonary stenosis so this pulmonary stenosis will give rise to small pulmonary arteries so essentially mixed blood or admixed blood goes either through the pulmonary artery or through the aorta. Because of obstruction in the pulmonary artery, there may be preferential more blood into the aorta. But overall, the saturation will be intermediate of the two types that we have seen. So the cardiomegaly will be mild. It will not be absent cardiomegaly. The apex is usually LV. As I said, single ventricle has an LV apex. Sometimes it will be an RV apex. One of the clues on ECG to the presence of single ventricle is monotonous QRS in the precordial leads. And that makes sense. There is no interventricular septum. So essentially, this is wrong. You, I can't even call it VSD. It's just single ventricle PS because there is no interventricular septum at all. So this is wrong. 
so what it means is there is just one chamber and that's that gives there is no transition from the lv to the rv or rv to the lv or anything like that so the qrs which arises from this muscle is going to be similar in all the leads that is v1 to v6 so any monotonous qrs which all look equal to each other there's no transition give, should suspect you to the evidence of the presence of single ventricle and just like corrected tga single ventricle can also give rise to an l post aorta that is in space this aorta instead of being on the right side over here as i've shown it can be on the left side and it can be very prominent it can basically overshadow all the blood which is going into the pa on clinical examination and so you will feel the aortic sound and you will feel the aortic pulsations in the left third intercostal space we're coming to the last example of tof like physiology and this is known as tricuspid atresia vsdps with normally related great vessels why is there such a huge name to this so basically you should just know that when you have tricuspid atresia the great vessels that is aorta and pulmonary artery can either be normally related that means there is crossing of the two arteries as you can see here aorta and pulmonary artery are crossing across or there and and with the aorta which arises from the lv and the pulmonary artery arising from whatever little rv that there may be or tricuspid atresia may be associated with transposition of great arteries in which the aorta will arise from the rudimentary rv and the pulmonary artery will arise from the lv but why have i stressed on normally related great artery variant is because when tricuspid atresia is associated with normally related great arteries only then does it show tof like physiology when there is transposition of arteries as associated with tricuspid atresia there is no tof like physiology there is no pulmonary stenosis and the vsd is very large so it will actually have a shunt like physiology with a greater left to right shunt right so tricuspid atresia here you can see this is the ra and there is a complete lack of entry of the blood from ra into the rv this is the rudimentary rv most of the blood from ra goes across the asd there has to be an asd in tricuspid atresia otherwise the patient will not live so this deoxygenated blood will go from ra into this la so here it is entering into the la through the asd it's also getting mixed with the oxygenated blood which is coming from the pulmonary pulmonary vein into the la and this particular blood is now both the oxygenated and deoxygenated is coming into the lv lv is giving rise to the aorta aorta is normally related with the pulmonary artery and hence again here you are getting two arrows one of oxygenated and one of deoxygenated and this again reminds you of single ventricle like physiology where there is mixing of the systemic as well as pulmonary venous returns so again this is an example of at mixture lesion denoted by an orange face which means the saturations are going to be intermediate intermediate from the two spectra right now why is this a tof like physiology is because there is pulmonary stenosis but this is not the only level where pulmonary stenosis or rv ot obstruction occurs the vsd which is present is in in itself inherently obstructive so either obstruction at the level of the vsd or obstruction at the level of the pulmonary valve gives rise to the pulmonary stenosis and that is how it contributes to the presence of uh, contributes to the presence of tof like physiology that is a single ventricle like admixture lesion with a rv oto now just like single ventricle cardiomegaly will be mild and the apex is obviously going to be lv for sure because the rv is very rudimentary and on ecg you will get an lvh you will get a left axis deviation you will get a counter clockwise loop as you get in dor we have not mentioned it here but as i said counter clockwise looping is seen with dor v tricuspid atresia and also in endocardial cushion defects and in addition you will get right atrial enlargement that's because obviously there is no entrance of the blood from ra to rv so to compensate for it the ra will enlarge
Now, the last question in this video series on TOF like physiology is what lesions exhibit L malposition of aorta? We've already talked about it, so we'll just summarize. And why is this important is when you are suspecting a TOF like physiology, when you're suspecting that a child has cyanosis, has decreased pulmonary blood flow like situation because of the pulmonary stenosis, and the patient has squatting spells or has cyanotic spells, squatting episodes, and you're wondering, is it a typical TOF or could it be any of the different other physiologies that we have seen? One of the clues can be the presence of L malposition of aorta. So there are only three basic causes of which the first two are important. I've already talked about this. This is congenitally corrected TGA or, cor or corrected TGA or LTGA as we commonly call it. And this demonstrate a left-sided aorta in space. So L aorta in CCTGA. So prominent aortic pulsations. Single ventricle, as I also mentioned, which has LV morphology. In two-thirds of the patients, there is evidence of an L-posed aorta. So what I had shown before was this particular cartoon where the aorta is right post, it, or it is known as D aorta, not R aorta, it's D aorta. And the left post aorta is the L aorta, wherein it is just lying on the left side and it gives rise to prominent pulsations. And it is arising from this chamber called the outlet chamber, just like here. Rarely, L, pose, L malposition of aorta is seen in less than 5% of DORV cases. So now let's summarize all that we've learned because this has been quite a marathon and it can be quite confusing, but it helps when you have few pictures and some mnemonics to help you remember. So as we've seen in order, TOF and its variants, corrected TGA and DORV, all these three examples of TOF-like physiologies are happy, they're green, they have favorable streaming, they have the best saturation, they have RV type of apex and they do not have cardiomegaly because their saturation is pretty good, quite acceptable. It's not perfect, but it is more than say more than 85% or between 80 to 90%. Then we come to the worst vari varieties that is TGA like varieties that is DTGA VSDPS and DORV subpulmonic VSDPS, which is known as toxic big. These are bad. They have unfavorable streaming. They both demonstrate TGA-like physiology and hence it is unfavorable. So the saturation is the lowest amongst all of them. And they have moderate cardiomegaly. And the apex of both is RV type of apex. And the last two which we saw are the ones which demonstrate an intermediate type of saturation. That is, they demonstrate something known as admixture physiology where there is mixing of the systemic and pulmonary venous return and hence the faces are orange so single ventricle a ps not vsd it's, it's just a single ventricle with ps and tricuspid atresia vsd ps with normally related great arteries this particular combination gives rise to an admixture physiology i have put l at the forehead of both these phases like like a loser L for loser, but it's actually not L for loser. It just says L for LV type of apex. So all these first five have an RV type of apex, but these two, that a single ventricle usually has an LV type of apex. Sometimes it can be RV, but we're talking about the common variants. And tricuspid atresia obviously is going to have an LV type of apex. And that's useful on ECG when you're trying to, or even clinical examination when you're trying to see which type of tof like physiology it may be. So is that all? I think so. It's been quite a journey. Please use active recall questions that I've given at the beginning of the first video so that you can answer, uh, question yourself and try to answer all that you've learned so far. Use all the diagrams that I have taught you with, all the drawn diagrams, hand-drawn diagrams, so that you can understand the concepts of every lesion that we've come across. And also use the various cartoons and the faces, the funny faces and all the mnemonics that we use to try and remember the finer details. As always, like, share, subscribe, comment, and press the bell icon. And then I'll see you next time with another topic. Bye-bye.